Hey everyone, welcome back. It is November 29th. You're at the Chaos Community call. I should have changed this to show my actual name here um, because that's not helpful to be listed as the whole community. So here we go. There I am. Um, hope everybody's doing good. We've been looking at dogs and talking about dogs. So I mean, our all our days are immediately better. So thank you, um, Katie and Benyash for showing showing and talking about your puppers. We love them. Um, okay, let's share. Let's do it. Let's jump in. If you have not put your name in the minutes, you know the drill by now. Um, please feel free to do that if you would like. And also, which cartoon character do you enjoy? Laughing out loud. I don't know who Helsing is. Is that like, it sounds scary. Yeah, Venya's nodding, but it has you laughing out loud, which is curious to me. It is bonkers absurd. Um, <laughs> you know those 1920 cartoons that definitely should not have been shown to children? Oh, yeah, this is yeah, the yeah. adult version of that. Nice. nice. Love it. All right. I'll have to Google that. Maybe I'll Google it incognito just in case, you know. Because I don't want my, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cartman, yes, from I South think it's, I'm embarrassed. It's like, do I tell the truth or do I make something up? And so <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. I right. find Bring your he, authentic self here. So. He's wildly inappropriate, and I find him hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, Patrick, Matt agrees. I love Patrick. Patrick He's, is in what cartoon? SpongeBob. OK. The close, the closest is correlate is Ralph, also from The Simpsons. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. Shaun the Sheep. <laughs> oh, Shaun the Sheep is hilarious. I didn't even know about Shaun the Sheep till I had friends from Great Britain, or maybe Sweden. I forget, but it, he's it's, Shaun the Sheep is huge over there. Like people started calling me Shaun the Sheep, and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Sean, here we go. We're gonna change. There we go. Ah. All right. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so let's hop into our, our wonderful agenda here. First is welcome back. Good to see everyone, as we said. Um, hope you all had a good little break. For me, I had planned on uh, catching up on some things and I did none of it. I just unplugged and it was fantastic and amazing and wonderful. So I hope you all did the same and like had a little refresh, hopefully. My house uh, is very clean now. Your house is? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I got my Christmas tree like 90% put up. Um, I have, a, I found an extra box of ornaments apparently that I had, so I got to finish, but I was very happy to get that up. Um, but now I have, so I went to put up my old tree. Sorry, we're, I'm just going to talk about this for a minute. Um, I went to put up my old tree and half the lights didn't work. Of course, I was only two years old and literally it was just sitting in a box. Like it didn't do anything. I don't know why they didn't work, but now I have this tree and I went out and got another one. So now I have two trees. So the question is, do I just put both of them up anyway, which my daughter thinks I absolutely should because you can never have too many trees. So what, what does the group think? Yes, no, yes. I see a yes in the in the chat so maybe i'll do that maybe i'll just put it right here behind me <clears throat> okay anyway sorry reminder no meetings from december 12th to january 9th because we're taking a very very long break um, as we do here at chaos because we care about burnout we care about your mental health and your energy level and just having that break is just really a good thing so that we can jump back in in january full speed ahead everybody feels good hopefully and has had a nice little just break from chaos. Now, that being said, um, we are, you are welcome. We are welcome hundred percent to keep chatting with each other and Slack asynchronously working on metrics. If you would like whatever your level of interaction and engagement you feel comfortable with, that's where we are. Like we will match that energy. So um, like for instance, in evolution, we have a, a pretty long list of, of metrics that we're working on for the metrics models. We're gonna continue that work asynchronously in Slack. So, um, you know, whatever, again, whatever energy level you're at is what will match. Does anybody have questions about that?
Okay, fair um, enough. Oh, there was a question. Are we talking about part two? No, we're we're still right here under you reminder saw... no meetings. Okay. Yeah, no, I have no questions about that. I thought you were talking about something else, which is maybe my cognitive processing delay. Okay. That's all right, Sean. Maybe, we're, I, we're with maybe you. I shouldn't be multitasking and messaging my class while I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's also fair. That's valid. Um, okay. So we are um, having a new onboarding meeting January 11th. Um, because we decided, Ruth and I decided that to have one next week would be like, hey, welcome to chaos, and then we'll see you in January. So we are just going to postpone that till January. Um, but again, we have had some newcomers floating around and uh, attended our office hours we had this morning. So um, if you do see a newcomer, welcome them and help explain the fact that we are taking an end of your break. But we are still around and we still um, appreciate their contribution and them showing up, even though like we're taking a break. And I see that um, I'm guessing Matt put this in here about the newcomer funnel. Would you like to talk about that, Matt? Um, sure. It was just a kind of a, a thought as to how we think about um, connecting with newcomers. I have no idea if those are the right words, but we just have so many people who have such an interest in the chaos project that if they're early on, like they're just inquiring about the chaos project, maybe there's ways that we can just kind of help that inquiry, you know? Kind of moving then all the way through that they're active they become active members and how we can support that activity so i don't think we necessarily point people to the same things all the time based on where they are in becoming a new contributor or becoming a newcomer or being a newcomer to the chaos project and i had sent this to elizabeth and ruth just to think about how we might want to kind of think about bringing people into the chaos project it's a pretty common way of thinking. And just for some context, Matt, um, where where did you find these? Because these uh, are like we don't apply. You're not like admitted to. No, them. no, I do. Yeah, no. This was. I think I was sitting in a meeting at a company. <laughs> they talked about um, like uh, like through internships. I want to say you know like students, like student recruiting. So it's kind of pulled from that. So how you think about connecting with students to actually getting them to be employed at an organization. Yeah, and so like the Orbit model, um, which I don't know if people are familiar with this. But... I've seen it, but I can't remember who produced it. Orbit. It was Patrick Woods. Yeah. Patrick Woods made Orbit. There we go. Um, so they they consider it like a, um, like a, a planet and there's like it's gravity pulling folks towards your community toward the core of your community. So they have a like a gravity score is what they call it. Um, and I'm looking to see where is the actual definition of the model. Uh, maybe it's an introduction. I'm going to yes, toss a few images it. in the meeting agenda. Yeah, exploring, participating, contributing, and leading are the, but it's essentially what Matt has put in here over here. Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong thing. You guys are not looking at my screen. I'm so sorry. I put it in the wrong thing. But anyway, here's the too many too many windows open, too many tabs. Here we go. Um, yeah, perfect. That's it. So yeah, exploring. Um, participating, contributing. So um, what would be great is if we had um, like different resources for folks at different levels. That was, that was what I was thinking. Too. Yep, yeah. and that's, yeah. And um, I, I love that idea, I really do. And, and I think like kind of, you know, not not like categorizing, but kind of categorizing folks into one of these four um, buckets would also help us. You won't you if you plan on using either orbit or common room, I recommend for chaos just using orbit, but you don't technically need to categorize anyone because orbit will just do it automatically if you just add tagging features to it. Yeah, yeah, so we can certainly look at that, um, how that works, but. Um, 
quick question. Uh, it's illegal here. I did uh, come across Orbit um, in another project, and I didn't find a way to open it up for other like for like the community to see it. Um, does anyone know if if it if it can be turned into an open interface, or it's always a, a group of people who has access to, or we need to give access to new people who are interested in looking at the dashboard and like how things are looking at any given time? Yeah, um, Orbit uses uh, API infrastructure to add any BI tool that you want. So it can use Data Studio, Tableau, et cetera. Um, but you have to actively port that data for security purposes. So just pick a dashboarding system and then bring the data in. I'm pretty sure we could use Grimoire Lab or anything that we already use for that. Okay, sounds the, good. Thanks. I, I see GitHub stars. Is there a link somewhere to the GitHub repository? Or is this a hosted thing that we have to participate in? Um, so basically, once you start an Orbit account, um, you go into integrations and then you connect it to your repo. And then it will start collecting all activity for that repo um, in addition to social mm -hmm. accounts, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then once all of that data has been crunched, it will merge uh, user profiles to connect people across systems. And then you can use a tag and flag system internally to um, sort, organize, and manage the data, kind of like the social currency system does. Um, and then once that's set, you can export it to anything downstream, um, any BI tool that you want. Yeah. So my, th my thoughts on this, okay, they were, I mean, it was maybe not quite like as complex as you were describing, Benya, like that might be down the road. At least this was my initial thought. It was more just like, as we have people coming into the newcomer Slack channel, like it would be great if we could just point them at really simple things if they're in that exploring stage to help them. That's like without like looking at the numbers on GitHub or whatever it might be. And then like, like, okay, so you've been exploring for two weeks or whatever, you know, three weeks, like we can just send these messages out. Like maybe here's a next thing for you to think about in terms of participating and like kind of kind of that way. I don't know if that aligns and I see Ruth, you have a question yeah. too. Yeah, um, in line with what you just said, right? Like um, I think, somehow we could also automate it with the bots like we have the welcome to chaos bots where we have like these different levels or categories and then we have resources we you know put up resources for each of these levels um you know maybe pulling from the handbook as well and then the um, welcome to chaos bots um kind of like informs them about what, like the stage they're in right and if they're in the exploring stage or category it gives them those resources that we have programmed in um with the bot and gives them the resources they can go through and maybe after um their first contribution that's i think that would be in the part participating would be joining meetings and to remind them of say for example we have the weekly meeting or you know, whatever meeting they have chosen to participate in. And then maybe after um, a month, we, ca we can do like a timeline, like a timeline, but we should not um, tie ourselves down to the timeline. So it doesn't feel like, okay, we expect you to be able to contribute in a month, right? So I think there's there's some way we can, because if, if, we, if we want to start off with, um, human interaction first that's good but I think along the line we might want to initiate the bots to you know go through do that process as well for us so that's something we can implement too with the bots um I think I have one question so um will this be like um would they be getting these notifications via email or via slack or how how exactly they get notified on what um, stage or level they are at and with the resources that they need at this particular level so um using orbit specifically it will actually merge the profiles between social accounts email accounts etc so if a person um 
finds itself in the Orbit database uh, based upon their GitHub uh, tag, uh, and they're using a different email address, but they're using the same profile picture, then the system will basically like guess and then check. Um, so it's basically combining the various different social platforms you have across the various uh, communities within Orbit. And then once it's connected, you basically say, all right, so if this person interacted in the private uh, community Slack, then they gain points in um, gravity. And if they communicated in the Twitter Slack or in on a Twitter page, then it's fewer gravity points, but more reach points. Um, so based upon how far out you are in the orbit level, the engagement pathways will change which allows us to organically award or demerit um, these tags from each individual account. And it it does this out of the box. So um, it's a lot easier than it sounds. I know it sounds super complex, but um, I hope that makes sense. So I have, I have two thoughts. One is um, Orbit's providing something along the lines of a metric <laughs> and uh, we build metrics and I I have I want to make sure that we understand what orbit is showing us in the context of the kinds of metrics that we've already developed and built things for so I'm certainly this looks like an exciting possibility but I think I think we should make sure that we understand it before we widely use it. Um, that would be my, my thought. Um, there is this link that I found uh, from the Orbit site called First Timers Only, which actually um, has a section at the bottom about uh, if you're an OSS project owner um, and the use simple, simply like start with um, using a first time only label and, uh, you know, basically indicating willingness to help people through their first contribution of some kind. Um, so that would, that would, I think, be very easy to, to implement across chaos. And then I, I think piloting, piloting this and sort of starting to understand for ourselves what, what this is and what it's showing people so that there's some coherence between the orbit model that we employ and the metrics that we've designed and the metrics models that we've designed. Like, I think it could be confusing because we already produce related metrics and metrics models. That's, so those are my two cents or 12 cents, whatever. So, I, yeah. so, so oh, I'm sorry, Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, so I had a question. Like, um, I know, um, Matt, when you mentioned Orbit um, initially with Elizabeth and I was like an example. So I wanted to ask, are we looking at using Orbit right to implement this? Because I missed out on first some part of the meeting. So are we using looking at using Orbit or like Orbit was like an example that you shared to kind of like drive home the point of the funnel? or the roadmap so yeah, i think elizabeth was more familiar with orbit than i, I was so I, and i do think it was just to drive home the point would be my guess so i mean my concern about like any platform is that we have to maintain it and we're already spread pretty thin on maintaining things within the chaos project and so so just my initial point, it was just like, and maybe it's not working, just to identify like a few things people could do in the project. And there's that list that you can see there um, at these different stages. And my, I guess my concern is that any, any tool might just require, even if it's just an hour or two a week, that's, that can be a lot. Yeah, agreed. And that was going to be my concern with like actually implementing this. Like, I don't know that I personally have the bandwidth to do it. Um, I thought that like mostly it was just to like explain kind of the different 
um, the pathway that someone would would take to becoming a leader in chaos and like here are kind of the stages and here's you know how you would move along but um i mean not that i'm against it i just i know that i personally don't have the bandwidth to um implement this and keep this going and like keep track of it all and 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 quite honestly like and this is just my (laughs) my personal philosophy on the chaos project itself and maybe people disagree um but i i don't know that we we need to um, keep track so closely of like how many people are in exploring. Do we have enough? Do we have more? Like, I I think we are much more organic here and I I don't want us to lose that bit of it where like we're we're concerned because we don't have enough people participating and they're not moving up to contributing. But like maybe it's just a little bit more organic than than that. And that's just my personal philosophy. So I will open the floor to other comments. Yeah, I do agree with that because like we we want to help people find resources. I think that's the main goal for you know that newcomer funnel or the newcomer roadmap. We just want to help people find those resources um, and make things easier for them to you know contribute to chaos and not like track how they are. And I think Matt did have to jump off for a different meeting. So it's not like he was like, I'm out, forget it, you guys, I'm out of here. Like, no, he just had another, yeah, he just had another meeting. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had six hours of meetings yesterday. The week back from a week off is always murder. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I would say my ultimate opinion about this is having a tag and flag system like this is immensely helpful. Um, I don't think it's necessary for you to track the stages that people are coming in or out of, but it is really handy to see when the automations trigger and then delivering those messages without having to do that work is very, very helpful. So having a rudimentary tag and flag system already implemented that covers the entire community could save us time and encourage more time for that organic organic interaction, because the less organic interaction of just like, hey, you're new here, here's the spiel, that's all off-boarded. Tell me what you mean by tag and flag. Um, So a tag and flag system is effectively just taking a user's profile, and then when a behavior is performed, you add a tag to it, and then a flag, whenever they perform a subsequent action occurs, that says, all right, check these things. If these things are true and these things are false, then fire. And then it provides a system. So if a person and already fire, has like a tag for a Twitter you? involved, huh? Fire like send a message to them. Yeah. So okay. um you could use the term proc. Like proc is often used in it as well. So a tag system essentially says this person has raised their hands for an interest in X. And then a flag says, is this person interested in X but not Y? then fire or don't fire. Um, So it basically procs the message to send. So you could say, if this person uh, first interacted on GitHub, they have a GitHub tag, but they don't have a Twitter tag, then don't send them information uh, specific to Twitter. Uh, If the person has a Twitter tag that is six months old, older than six months, and interacts on GitHub, then send them a notification to join the Chaos Africa Twitter just as examples. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, and I feel like I'm failing at this, is it doesn't need to be complicated, but the automations themselves can free up a lot of uh, time for us to like focus on the truly engaging interactions in the community. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And maybe this is something that we kind of look into for uh, like 2023 of something that, you know, we, we kind of delve into a little deeper of like how we could we could use it. Does anybody know, um, I guess I could could research it, but does anybody know if like Orbit is like expensive or like are there costs involved or how does that work? Um, I think it's free up to a thousand users. And then after that, I think it's more expensive than common room.
Okay. And again, we did do an interview with Patrick yeah. about the system, and we do need to refresh that podcast. So maybe we could make that discussion with him. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um... Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I do think some of the other things that uh, this led us down the path to, like this, um, the first timers only.com suggestions, I think are pretty solid. Um, probably worth, you know, they, you know, there's like adding special tags where we say we're willing to help someone through their first pull request, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I know for it. Go ahead, Ruth. No, I just I just said those tags are usually like the first time as only tags. They're usually like helpful and you know people are able to pick up issues easily and like those tags. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, we have we do have a limited meeting time today because we are going to try to take some time and talk about Chaos Con. I think at the end of this, which for anybody new to Chaos. Um, we are hosting a chaos con in early uh, 2023 in February. So um, we're trying to kind of make sure all our loose ends are tied up um, while we can and we have everybody together. So for the purposes of that, this meeting that we were here right now, the community part of the meeting will um, end quickly and sooner than normal. So let's go ahead and move on is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> trying to say unsuccessfully um okay auger release yay auger team uh, sean we want to hear about this because this is a big deal i put a big post in um the general channel but yeah we've completely uh, refactored and tested for the last three four months um augers augers collection uh capabilities it's about a thousand percent faster and it's not a made-up number like it's literally that much faster to collect data and we have a, a far more robust and refactored uh, project now um, that will, I believe, be easier to join and easier to contribute to. So I'm, uh, I'm super excited about it. It's, um, it's been a lot of work um, funded partially by the Sloan Foundation, uh, helping me bring on another uh, maintainer. And uh, no, I'm just really, I'm really excited about it. And uh, keen to you know have folks experiment with it open issues uh, tell us where you're having trouble there is uh, some contributing documentation uh, that we need to update yet but um it's it's um i don't know it, i it's pretty fantastic um and there's a couple other projects that are um, one's an auger new interface and there's also a project over at red hat um I think it's called uh, eight knot that's using the new back end to produce some pretty spiffy visualizations. And so we're going to be integrating that as the auger front end um, here over the next several months. Um, and there will be a hosted version that allows you to log in, enter your repos or orgs, um, and then you can group them however you want so that you can see them however you want. So, um, I'm, I'm just really excited. It's um, I'm a data person, so like data data quality has always been a, a big like I've always wanted to be able to verify it, and um, I have you know so much confidence in this version. Not that I didn't have confidence in the other versions, but um, we handle a lot of the issues that come up with weird data um, and API timeouts and all the all the things that can affect collection. And then we make sure that we have all the data. And if we don't, we tell you. So yeah, just, um, I don't know how to talk about software without showing and telling and taking up too much time. So I'll just say that uh, we're all really excited and keen to um, onboard uh, additional contributors from within the chaos community. Excellent work, everyone. Um, and if you are interested in seeing a little more about what the actual the changes were, Sean did a great job of outlining all of it in Slack. You can check the Augur channel or the general channel. I think those that announcement went both places. 
Um, and I'll also probably, Sean, just copy and paste that into the newsletter. Um, since yeah. you did such a great job of explaining everything, I'm just going to completely plagiarize your work and take it for my own. So Yeah, it's not plagiarizing. It's, um, <laughs> it was a multi-channel distribution yeah, or I'm something. Amplifying your message. Amplifying. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and then real quick, uh, we did, if you've not checked out the chaos websites lately, um, it is does look a little different and we're calling it a soft launch because it's not quite 100% there yet. We're still working on um, the community knowledge base part, um, tweaking some things there and just kind of tightening that up a little. Um, eventually, we are going to ask everybody to just have a look at it. And if you find things um, to please open issues, um, actually, you can probably do that now. If you're looking through the chaos website and you see something that looks weird or like a broken link or something like that, just know that it is still in progress, but we would still appreciate maybe an issue in the website repo just so we don't miss it. Um, that would be great. So if you're a newcomer to chaos, that's an excellent way you can help us and an excellent way to contribute is to just kind of poke around the, um, the chaos website and I will put it here just in case you don't know what it is. It's just chaos.community. Um, and a huge shout out to our Chaos Africa design team for all of these wonderful new graphics we have. Um, just really, really exciting um, look that we have now. And again, it is still, we're still working on it, but yay, I'm so happy. It's gonna look, it's just gonna be so awesome when it's 100%. Um, and I see somebody also did add some notes here, missing community working group under community. Okay, so we'll, or missing comms, sorry, missing comms working group, because that's new. Okay, so um, I think Ruth is, yeah, Ruth's on here still. So we'll we'll make sure we have issues open for these kind of tweaks um, and we'll take care of them. And then really quick, the final thing we wanted to bring up from Evolution is that we are missing some access to some docs in the spreadsheet and we're hoping we're like just putting a call out a desperate call out to anybody who might own some of these um docs so yeah. like we we're trying to work on these and like we can't get access to the file and we've requested it but nobody's responding <laughs> nobody's owning up to it and nobody's allowing us access to any of it so we we know that there's work that's been done in these um but it's going to get lost if we can't get into the docs so, and this is also a prime example why it's really good if we don't have one person that owns that doc, but we do it like under the chaos account so that multiple people have access to the doc and can jump in if there's, if needed. So, um, yeah, if you've worked in evolution and you have maybe started some docs, um, yes, as, as Georg says, plus one reason to create them as the chaos project owner or Elizabeth, is, yeah. is, is there, a, um, some kind of signal on the evolution metric spreadsheet about the ones we don't have access to. I think we've tried to mark them here. Google Doc not accessible. Uh, oh, OK. All right. Call um, me. Got it. Got yeah. It. So if you remember working on any of these, and a lot of these are older um, that we're just trying to like kind of bring to fruition and, and work on. So um, so yeah, if you know if you know about them, let us know. Yeah, yeah like Matt, Matt reminded me that Carter worked on, in evolution. I think all of these documents and metrics were actually created after he graduated, but okay. I'm going to, I'm going to text him and check. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I think that that's about it. So this leaves us about 10 minutes for the chaos complaining committee to wrap some things up. So um, apologies for the rushed uh, agenda here real quick. But um, appreciate everybody being here. I'm going to stop sharing. We'll stop recording.